Hey everybody, uh, my name's Jacob Hall. I'm really excited to be here with my colleague, Sheng, to talk about our research on our Chinese development aid. Uh, Sheng's gonna take it away, so um, yeah, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, thank you all for attending this session. My name's Sheng, I'm a research analyst working at 8Data. Um, so 8Data is a research lab based at the College of William Mary, so a little bit further from here. Um, but we work with multilateral organizations, government agencies, not from not just from US, uh, UK, but also like developing countries. Uh, we're trying to provide policymakers and practitioners better evidence on how sustainable development finance are targeted, monitored, and evaluated. Um, as some of you may know that uh, in this kind of the world of foreign aid or development, there are two large group of countries, traditional donors like US, Germany, Japan, the others who are longstanding uh, OECD DAC members reporting their project level finance to OECD, so everything is transparent. But they're non-traditional donors, you know, like China, Saudi Arabia, they're not DAC members, so they are no, have no obligations basically to report everything on details. And that result in an in informational gap, not just for, you know, the donor country, but also for all the receiving countries, especially for um, lower and middle com income countries. So at A Data, we spent years trying to pull up like a comparable data set uh, for non-traditional donor countries. One of the huge launch we have last year was for this uh, global Chinese development finance data set on 3.0 version. And later in the part, we'll be you know showing our gratitude on how this is beneficial from OpenStreetMap community. But before that, I do want to give like a little bit of background on the information we have. Like I mentioned earlier, there's an informational gap, right? And we're trying to build up this apple to apple comparison so that people can have better evidence on how those finance versus the traditional donors. And that's gonna provide uh, more evidence for developing countries, especially for the government agencies to better manage their debt sustainability system. So if we were to put all the information we have in a larger and broader bird's eye views across the years, um, this is kind of the broader trend of how Chinese global finance look like. In other words, how BRI looks like. Well, we are not very far from DC, so we attend different, you know, government briefings and con congressional hearings. I often hear people said, you know, BRI is dead or something like that, which is not necessarily true. Uh, based on the information we collected over the years, as you can see right now, um, the growing trend or the upward trend is quite significant. Ever since BRI has been announced in the post 2013, 14 period, the average loan finance scale is actually at 80 billion US dollars. I'm talking about the constant 2021 just for consistency um, annually. And at the most kind of updated version or data we have in 2021, the loan finance from China to all the 165 lower and middle income countries is actually at 85 billions. And now you may wonder how that compares to some you know, familiar names, for example, like G7 countries. Now here's a comparison. US is actually the leading provider of foreign assistance of all the G7 countries. And from the same BRI period, China actually outspent US more than like a two to one basis. And China also outspent the single largest multilateral organization in 2021 for foreign aid provision, which is the World Bank at 53 billion. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm gonna get to there just in a second. But this is a great question. Um, you know, at 53 billion, and we saw China earlier was at 85, so that's a huge gap. Um, now let's get to the OOF and ODA, which is actually a critically important concept. So from OECD's guidance, uh, a foreign aid or development finance can be generally separated into two parts. One part, purely development finance intent means the donor countries have no kind of expectation to gain profits from the receiving country. That's normally when we consider as a traditional foreign aid. For example, grants, concessional loan. Those are things that has been given into a receiving country not looking for profits. And if you look at United States, the ODA, which is a grant, concessional loan portion, traditional finance, is actually taking the majority of the portfolio from the United States. And that goes the same for majority of the G7 countries. However, if you're looking at China, OOF takes the majority, and what is OOF? OOF are those finance looking for profits, normally like non-concessional loans, loans with compelling interest rate. 
market. There's some portion of it still trying to, you know, providing development finance kind of intent and, and aid into the receiving country, but at a higher cost. So that's the provision difference. And after the data set launch, um, our work was covered from mostly the major medias, uh, not just from the US, the other country, but also in the receiving countries. And uh, our associate director was also interviewed by BBC Live and also like testified uh, in front of Congress just last month. But how's that, what does that to do with OpenStreetMap? Actually, we owe a huge debt to this community because OpenStreetMap enable our research to the next level of precision. Traditionally, when you know social science, people were trying to provide geospatial analysis, we were normally talking about, okay, let's grab a century in a district, in a province, and let's compare that to other problems. But with OpenStreetMap, we were actually to do precise geocodings. Instead of just giving a century to represent a hydropower station in a province, we're now using the exact boundaries of the hydropower station. And that would impact and enable us to do a lot of more impact evaluations. We do collect information about you know, project implementation details, so we know when exactly did a project start, when exactly did a project end, and now we can attach different layers on it, like PM2.5, nighttime light index, vegetarian index, so we can compare what exactly was the situation before the construction, during the construction, post-construction. And that's gonna bring all the insights instead of just you know, giving like hypothesis, theories, we're now providing actual data points, measurements, to tell what's the true story behind. But uh, I'll hand it over to Jacob for some exciting uh, updates on our work and also the details. Yeah, thanks, Sean. So um, yeah, after years of working on this GCDF uh, data set and uh, publishing multiple versions with increased uh, ranges of time and levels of detail on the, on the specific projects that China's funding overseas, um, it's become more and more clear that the geospatial aspect of this data is, is one of the most important aspects for our data consumers. It's one thing to see all of the details about how much these projects are costing, but it's another thing to see exactly where those are occurring in time and space in, in the world. Um, so as a part of this latest 3.0 data set release, we're also releasing a 3.0 geospatial uh, component of this data set using all OpenStreetMap data that we've collected for each of the different projects that took place in a specific location. So this might be bridges or railroads that have been uh, funded uh, in part or in, in whole by China. Um, so as a part of this, we've documented the methodology for collecting and uh, like refining all of that data from OpenStreetMap. And we're really excited to share that we've uh, peer reviewed this and it's uh, pending publication actually next week uh, in a journal. So we're really excited about bringing uh, OpenStreetMap and community uh, generated information uh, to a, a data set like this where we can have a peer reviewed, very rigorous aspect of uh, publishing that data. So all of this will be freely available as is our GCDF data and the OpenStreetMap and GCDF data sets are licensed differently, but you can join them very easily and use them for whatever data uh, consumption needs you might have. So we're really excited about what this represents for our lab and how we approach geospatial analysis. We can take things to the next level and hopefully our data consumers can also do the same. So here's a quick look at what the geospatial data looks like for the geo GCDF. So um, I know this is kind of a lot to take in, but hopefully you can sort of see on this <laughs> washed out screen uh, the country boundaries here. And um, I hope this sort of helps illustrate how global these projects are occurring. Um, I think the Belt and Road Initiative, sometimes uh, folks might think it's, it's only occurring sort of in the regions around China. Um, but China is really focused on funding many different projects across the entire globe. And um, this geospatial uh, component of the GCDF data set is going to really help people analyze and filter through that data in a, in a spatial way. So here you can see not just the uh, dollar amounts in each of the regions, the darker uh, colors indicate uh, higher dollar amounts that China's spending on these projects, but we also have very long um, multi-country or, or like multi-province projects, like these highways or railroads that you can see those, those linear features here. So there's a lot of really rich metadata, thanks to all the OpenStreetMap tags that we've been able to import into this data set. We're really excited about what this uh, means for our data consumers. So here's just a quick example of some of the analysis that we can start to do with this data. So ADATA has internally started looking at some of the risk factors that we might identify with some of these GCDF projects. 
So for example, taking into uh, account some environmental risk factors, looking at uh, satellite image uh, uh, data sets, for example, trying to fit, find ways or areas that we're concerned about for other reasons. And we can start mapping that to this GeoGCDF data set and identify areas that we might want to study further or um, you know, produce other reports or analyses for others to, to consume. And a lot of this work has started setting the agenda in uh, m multinational media uh, and how people start talking about the BRI and other Chinese development uh, initiatives. So yeah, we're really here to thank the OpenStreetMap community. This project can't, couldn't have happened in the, the time and the accuracy that it did uh, if it weren't for all of the community members that have, in each of these regions, contributed all of this data. We're really hopeful that we can continue to expand the extent of this data set, start looking at more of the high-income countries and where those projects are being funded by China and other uh, donors. And um, we're really hopeful to have a conversation with OSM community members as well as other researchers on how we can further improve and expand on this data set. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, we're really excited to talk to anyone who might be interested in using this data. And uh, thanks to our co-authors as well for their work on this project. Okay. We have some time? Great. Yeah, we're happy to take any questions if you're interested. For sure, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of the times OpenStreetMap was really great for us. I mean, a lot of these projects are major bridges or railroads. I think OpenStreetMap has a lot of uh, experience mapping. So uh, a lot of that was just off the shelf, which is fantastic for us. Uh, some of the more complex, like uh, relations, multi-polygons, stuff like that, there was uh, some data validation uh, steps that we had to take. Sometimes I'd be going in and fixing some multi-polygon relations that, for example, didn't have the correct roles assigned. But for the most part, everything was really clean, and, and we're really grateful for that. Yeah. If I can just add, um, add up on that, is um, our workflow apparently like involved doing with like a really long time of data collection process. So when we were collecting or like geocoded a project in the first place, the link might be broken in the next three months. So uh, every time we were trying to like having a regular kind of data cleaning process to identify those broken links, either trying to resolve it on our end, find a new link, or trying to like you know. Um, making sure we got a correct feature, like right in OSM. Maybe some other collaborator got a better link for that, um, more precise, then we just need to manually update it. Exactly. Yeah. Different sections, and there are, you know, renovations, pavement, yeah. So go ahead. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, for our main data set, uh, we do have a very rigorous process of relying on majorly the official sources. We actually have the official records uh, and agreements between donor countries and recipient countries. So we normally quite often have the actual you know, construction contract between those, including coordinates and the others, and also images and photos, which help us to navigate down to this rabbit hole. Sorry, go ahead. Gotcha, it's also a great question. So we are trying to test all like different methodology around it and they eventually the final goal is trying to using uh, a consistent approach, looking for like a large scale of those loan finance projects so that we can get patterns uh, out of it because we heard different arguments instead of Washington DC when we doing those kind of uh, presentation workshops with policymakers, people may have like a preset agenda to go with. So we're trying to provide a true story behind. So like you mentioned, right, if we do have those very precise implementation dates, we're trying to grab a fixed measurement period before that, during that, and after that, so that we can have a consistent uh, measurement. Sorry, I think we're running out of time. Yes. Yes. 
project was initially to be pre-funded, but then also when it actually started, um, it was funded by actually a grant from the city of Seattle. So that's why it's not in the budget right now. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, if you have any questions, uh, you can feel free to you know, contact us uh, later on. We are happy to follow up. Uh, we're going to do another uh, data updates actually next year, like later next year. Uh, we'll be including like new coming years up to 2023.